Hi, this is Julian. Welcome to my session, What is Stadia Games and Entertainment? I'm Portfolio Director, and I will explain in a few minutes what is Stadia Games and Entertainment. But in the meantime, uh, let, me, let me give you a little bit of uh, background on uh, who I am and where I come from. So I come from the PC modding community. I've been an uh, indie developer. I also worked for quite some time at Ubisoft, including here in Montreal and also in Ubisoft Toronto. Uh, I've been working on uh, some of the IPs, some IPs like Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, and uh, more recently Watch Dogs Legion. Uh, I've been at Google for about two years now. Uh, I'm based in Mountain View, California. So, Stadia Games and Entertainment. So, you may have heard about Stadia Games and Entertainment, and you may ask yourself, what's the difference with Stadia? So, we're all part of the same big team, but we uh, are doing very different things. You can think about Stadia as a platform and Stadia games and, and entertainment as the content arm of this platform. So to keep it simple, we are both a developer and a publisher. Developer because we have first party studios and we're making our own games, nothing to announce yet. But we are also a publisher, um, which is also known in the industry as second party. And we have already uh, released two games that you may have heard about, uh, Guilt, done by our friends at Tequila Works, and more recently, Orc Must Die Free by Robot and Entertainment. There are more games that we have announced. Um, we are about to release very soon Outcasters, made by our friends at Splash Damage, and we also have announced partnership with studios such as Uppercut Games, Supermassive, uh, you may know them for Until Dawn on PlayStation, released a few years back. And also Harmonix, um, who is very famous, obviously, for uh, a lot of music games and very famous games. Uh, we have many more games in development and many more partners, but there is nothing we can announce today. But you should expect us to grow as a publisher and have like a lot of games and a lot of genre with like um, a big budget game as well coming up. So, Stadia Games and Entertainment, we are still a very young organization, but we are growing pretty fast. What you see on the map is not the Stadia organization, but really the Stadia Games and Entertainment organization. So, we have people on, our, um, on the publishing side in Montreal here, uh, Los Angeles as well. Montreal and Los Angeles are also the places where we have our first party studio. But we also have um, uh, part of, uh, people part of our publishing organization in San Francisco, Mountain View, uh, Munich, London, and uh, last but not least, Tokyo. So we are expanding. Our goal is to become a first-class global publisher and be wherever uh, uh, developers are. Uh, so expect expect us to grow in the future. So we are a publisher, uh, and this is obviously um, one way to get your game on the Stadia platform, and we're going to talk a, a little bit more about that. But I want to point out that this is not the only way to get your game on Stadia. Um, uh, if you already have a publisher, you can go uh, the third party route. So a uh, road. So if you already have a publisher and uh, you can just talk to them, they are most likely already in contact with uh, the Stadia platform and they can, we can help you bring the, the game on our platform. We also have a program called Stadia Makers and this is the next presentation after me. So I encourage you to look at this presentation as well. Um, and last but not least, we have also second party. So Stadia Games and Entertainment, which I represent. To put things in context, I said I was Portfolio Director for Stadia Games and Entertainment. So my role is to work on first party and second party and help um, uh, choose which game uh, we should bring on the platform. And being second party, we obviously care also as well about uh, bringing exclusive games. So as a publisher, um, what you can expect from us is uh, help on funding, obviously. Research, we have great UXR uh, and marketing team who can help make research on your game and help you better understand how to reach the players where they are and understand how to improve your games. Production, um, it's, um, it's expected, but I also want to point out here that everybody in our publishing organization has worked on games and have experience shipping games of all size, um, from mobile games and free-to-play and massively with license, uh, massively multiplayer games with license, big AAA. Uh, we have a treasure trove of knowledge internally that uh, we can uh, put at your disposal and help uh, ship the best possible game. 
And obviously, as well, QA, localization, marketing, and more. Uh, more here is really open-ended. Uh, the way you should interpret that is Google love innovation. We have so many great technology being developed within Google. Uh, not necessarily for, always for games, by the way, but sometimes some of this technology can be used to improve games. Uh, and we also have, uh, as and e we also have our own R&D uh, group working on some really cool tech. So I'm not going to expand on this today, but depending on what your game is about, um, if there are cases where we can help you really push the boundaries of what's possible. And that's an exciting part of working with, with Google. So uh, what do we care about? Uh, great work relationship, this is key. Uh, making games is hard. Making a good game is very, very hard. If you add uh, COVID on top of that, uh, I mean, like we know, we understand the pain. And as a publisher, we want to really help you go through this. So having great work relationship is, is absolutely key. Uh, we trust your vision. We want to help you deliver it. And we want to help you succeed, right? And again, as a very still young organization, one thing we aspire to do is to grow together with you. Uh, and uh, ship a first game, uh, have success, and keep going on and, and build a relationship over time. That's really who we want to be as a publisher and how we want to be known in the future. So what type of games we're looking for? So still, yeah, games and entertainment. I want to put the word entertainment in bold here just to um, make sure that everybody understands that. Yes, obviously, we're all gamers and we are here to publish games, but not only. The entertainment here uh, is uh, represent our appetite for interactive entertainment in general. Uh, having YouTube and trying to reach as many people as possible. We, we are interested if your game is uh, atypical, right? So um, uh, we're looking for all type of uh, interactive experience and you will see in the future actually us raising uh, some games that are already in development um, uh, in this area. So we are interested in all type of genre and budget. Um, it's really not something that uh, is a big razor from uh, $1 million to very uh, big budget. Uh, we're interested in all type of uh, games. So um, the big key takeaway for today is if you're excited about working with us, it doesn't matter what is type of genre on budget. We're interested to look at what you have, right? Uh, that's really um, who we are as a publisher. We're interested in all type of genre and budget. That being said, there's a few things that can um, that we are focusing on right now, and that's very timely right now. We are specifically looking for RPGs and game, games that ship in 2023 and beyond. That might not be true in a few months, so don't take this don't take this to art. But if you do have an RPG, we are especially interested in looking at your, your pitch right now. Um, something as well to keep in mind: we are part of Google, and we have a very vast and rich ecosystem that we can leverage, uh, and so. Uh, obviously, I'm going to start with YouTube. Uh, we love YouTube. We have a great work relationship with YouTube creators. And we, if your game is highly watchable or highly playable, if your game is a game that helps uh, um, leverage player interaction, that's something we are especially interested in. And we have a lot of things that we are working on in the future that's going to help improve all these things and the relationship between the audience and the gamers. Um, screen agnostic and control agnostic, this is something that uh, we strongly believe in too. We believe that one of the big advantages of the cloud is being able to play anywhere on any device you already own, which means making your game as accessible as possible. Right. So um, um, as an example, if your game um, is a game that can be played on every type of control, including touch. That's something we, that's gonna we're gonna pay attention to um, because obviously we, we believe that one of the big advantage of cloud again. Ceph Ceph stands for exclusive feature here, the exclusive feature. We have uh, APIs that uh, are being developed. Uh, you may have heard about crowd play or crowd choice. There's a few more that we're working on. These, um, uh, if you want more information, you can look up online. We already have games that have uh, um, uh, this API, which uh, help um, building player interaction um, uh, with YouTube. Uh, and if you have games that are, again, high, that resonate very well with YouTube, that's where the Ceph can help. Cloud Native, Cloud Native is a little bit um, harder to describe, but um, what you should keep in mind is, Really embracing the cloud, it means that taking advantage of everything we have in our data center. So your game does not run technically on a box, 
right? So if you have games that where you can go massively multiplayer or where you think you have a good game design that would take advantage of uh, distributed physics, things that you would not be able to do on a traditional uh, box, that is of particular interest for us. Um, we, we are very interested in pushing innovation, as I said a few times already. So there's a, there's a few things here that, that, that would help um, um, if you have a, a design that actually leverages these type of things. So hopefully I convince you to uh, talk to us and, and tell us more about your game. So how do you reach us? Uh, we have a wonderful business development team, but specifically for second party, I want to highlight Corinne here. You can, um, you have her email address now. Uh, she's waiting for your email. Um, and we want to see, again, what you are cooking. We strongly believe, uh, in, especially in the Montreal ecosystem, which is fantastic. But wherever you are, whatever your genre, whatever the budget, we're interested, we want to have a look at it. I hope I've convinced you uh, that uh, we are a great partner and we want to work with you. Thank you for attending this talk and keep in mind there's more Stadia uh, talk coming up. So uh, pay attention to this as well. Thank you. <laughs>